user accounts are a requirement to connect to shared folders created on a Synology NAS. Properly assigning permissions to users can lead to a robust shared folder infrastructure with access rules that can be fine-tuned for any network. In this video, we'll first look at ways to enhance user account security by adjusting password and access rules. We'll enable user home folders, which will provide each user we create a personal folder for their own files and create users and assign permissions to those users to access the shared folders we created in the last video. If you are following along in the Synology NAS installation and local area network setup series, setting up user accounts on a Synology NAS is the fifth step in the seven video series. Before creating users, let's begin by looking at the password security options that we can adjust. To do this, log in to DSM, then go to Control Panel, User, then click on the Advanced tab. We see various security options that can be configured, including allowing users to reset forgotten passwords via email, forcing users to change passwords upon password reset by an administrator, various password strength rules, password expiration scheduling, and two-step verification. Some of these security options require added configuration elsewhere in DSM, which is beyond the scope of this video, and the options you choose for your users should be adjusted to your own specific needs. Considering that we're configuring a LAN environment, I'll make a few adjustments to the password strength rules, including the requirement for mixed case, numeric and special characters, excluding the use of common passwords, and change the minimal password length to 10 characters. Scrolling further down in this window, we see the user home section. I'll check the enable user home service box to enable a personal folder for each user that we create. This option gives each user a personal space that is a nice complement to the shared folders we created previously. I'll also check the enable recycle bin box to store deleted files giving the user the option to restore a file if needed. And that's all I'd like to do in this window, so I'll click Apply to implement the changes. Continuing where we left off in the last video, we have the three shared folders in place, and we're now ready to create users and assign the user's permissions to those folders. In our example network, we'll have two sets of users. The first are managers, who will have read-write access to all three of the shared folders that we've set up. The second set of users are employees who will have more refined and restricted access to the various shared folders. Employees will have full read-write permissions to the public shared folder, read-only access to the employee policies folder, and no access to the confidential folder. Lastly, being that we've enabled the user home service, as we create users, each will automatically have a home folder created as well. This will provide each user their own personal shared folder for their own individual needs. Let's start adding users and assign permissions to the users to access the shared folders we created. Within DSM, go to Control Panel, then User. Here we see the current list of users that were created during the installation process. The admin and guest users are currently disabled, and the dsadmin user is the administrator account that I'm logged in as. To add a user, click on Create, then Create User, which will start up the user creation wizard. I'll start by creating a manager account with the name of Manager1. I'll leave the description and email blank as these fields aren't required, and enter in a password following the password strength rules that were set up earlier. The remaining boxes I'll leave as is and click Next. For group settings, I won't make any changes and click Next. We'll work on groups in the next video in this series. The Assign Shared Folder Permissions window is where we'll need to select the checkbox under the Read Write column for all of the shared folders, excluding Homes, and click Next. We won't make any changes for the next few wizard windows, so I'm clicking Next on each of these and finally click Apply to finish setting up the Manager 1 user. I'll next create an employee user with the name of employee1, working my way through the user creation wizard again. When I reach the Assign Shared Folders permission window, I'll select the checkbox under the Read Write column for the Shared folder, select the checkbox under Read Only for the Employee Policies folder, and lastly the checkbox under the No Access column for the Confidential folder. 
Then I'll click Next through the remaining windows and finally Apply to complete the Employee 1 setup. Let's now test to make sure that each of the new users have the proper permissions assigned to the various shared folders. I'll log out of the Administrator account and log in with the Manager 1 user. I'll bring up FileStation and here we can see all three of the shared folders plus the personal home folder for Manager 1. We assigned read-write permissions to all of these shared folders, and we can test this by creating a test folder in each of the top-level shared folders. Looks like the permissions for the Manager 1 user are working as expected. I'll log out, then log back in as the Employee 1 user. I'll again bring up FileStation, and we can already see that the no access permission to the confidential folder is working, being that we don't see the folder listed here. Employee 1 should have read-write access to the shared folder, and I'll test this by creating a folder in it, which is working fine. The Employee Policies folder should be set to read only and looks to be the case. I see the folder created by Manager 1, and I get an error when trying to create a new folder. Finally, within the Personal Home folder, I'm able to create a folder indicating proper read-write access. Our users are all set up with the permissions assigned to the shared folders that were created. Next, we'll explore using user groups in the sixth video in the Synology NAS installation and local area network setup series. Look for the link to that video and all other videos in the series in the description below, which will be added as they become available. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to like it and also consider subscribing to help this channel grow.